youtube family welcome back to another video as you guys already saw the thumbnail we're going to be doing a cute freestyle set so let's jump right in this video i already went in and pushed my client's cuticles back that way i exposed all my new growth now i'm going to come in with my cuticle bit and i'm going to use this bit to get super close to the cuticle area and get in those side walls you definitely want to invest in a cuticle bit if you're having a problem getting close to your client's cuticles and getting in the side walls with your sanding band the cuticle bit will definitely help that because usually the cuticle bits they're very gentle so they do not cut your clients easily so you're going to be so comfortable getting close and getting all that excess all the new growth off the nails so now I'm going to come in with my fine sanding band and I'm going to use my sanding band to go over the surface of the client's nail and I'm just going to go around the cuticles and the side walls one more time from the right to the left and I'm not applying too much pressure to my client's nail because I do not want to create any friction or I don't want to damage my client's natural nail. So as you guys can see, I'm working from the right going to the left and that's how i that's my routine i go from the right to the left so you will know when your client's nail is prepped because you're going to see all the nails starting to have that matte look you definitely want to spend time to prep your nails because if you do not prep your nails properly you are going to have lifting when i'm prepping my drill is usually between four to six thousand rpms you don't want to go over six thousand because this is not good for your client's natural nails now i'm going to come in and i'm going to remove all that excess cuticle with my nipper nipping from the right to the left and you do not have to go deep in this do it however you are comfortable go as far as you're comfortable but you know if you're not comfortable just don't do it or like i said before do whatever you're comfortable with doing but i do it because sometimes when i'm applying my cuticle bead if there's like hanging cuticle sometimes that cuticle can get in the way of my cuticle bead being nice and snug and you know nice and neat around the cuticle area so now i'm coming in with my square tips and i'm going to measure my nails making sure they fit from side wall to side wall you always want to make sure your nails are fitting from side to side that's where it's going to have its full strength if your nails are too small they're going to break easy they're going to be lifting up from the sides all that extra stuff so just make sure your nails are fitting side to side and it's nice and snug to your client's nail if you have a tip that's too big and one that's too small always go for the bigger tip because you can always come in with your scissors or your hand file and remove any excess now i'm going to come in with my kds glue and i'm going to apply this glue exactly at the free edge of my client's natural nails you don't want to glue your tip halfway through the nail or you know you just want to glue the tip at the free edge you want to leave all that nail bed to apply your acrylic because this way you're going to have longer lasting nails if you're applying your tips and you notice that it's crooked or you're not sure if it's going on right don't be shy to turn your client's nail and look at it from the client's angle because it's good to spend time and put the tips on right from the jump because trying to get your shape back in the end sometimes is impossible so spend time in the end and get your tips on straight for some reason this client i couldn't seem to figure what direction her nails are going and the tip is going so i was i was just each time i place it before the glue dries too much i was just turning her hand and making sure everything is nice and straight Now I'm going to come in with my scissors and I'm going to cut based on my client desired length. Then I'm going to put each nail against each other making sure they're all on the same length. You want to make sure your cuticles are aligned next to each other. That way you're going to see the length of each nail and you're going to make sure everything is looking nice and everything is on the same length. 
and I do the same thing for the opposite hand as well. I come in with the opposite hand and I measure it to the first hand, making sure they're both on the same length. With the second hand, you never want to cut it maybe exactly where you cut the first hand. Try to go just a tad bit above the first length because that's if you're not sure but if you're sure you can always go ahead and go for one shot but it's so bad when you have to come back and cut the first hand which was which is the length your client really needed so if you're not sure cut the second hand a tad bit longer then you come in and measure it with the first hand and even everything out so now i'm coming in with my 100 100 grit hand file i'm not going to do too much shaping because these tips are already nice and square so all i'm going to do is just come over making sure everything is nice and straight if i have any excess hanging out offline i'm just going to come in and make sure everything is even and is aligned is in the it's in track with the side walls so that's all i'm doing because she want them to be super super square no tapered nothing so i don't have too much shaping to do make sure i'm getting my the edges too everything is nice and straight i always make sure the tips are looking how i want my shape to look from the beginning because this is going to save me so much time when i apply my acrylics and it's time to shape so i always try to get my shape as close as possible from the jump shaping the tips that way i save time with my shaping don't forget to like this video guys so hit that pause button whatever whatever you got to do and hit the like button like my videos anyways so now i'm coming in and i'm just going to go over the where the tip and the natural nail meet making sure i smooth that ledge out that way my acrylic application is going to be much smoother i always like to do this because sometimes if you're putting on a nude that's on the lighter side or a pink you can see through it and you can maybe see that ledge as well so now i'm coming in and i'm dusting my nails off you never want to leave any dust nothing on this client's nail because that can also contribute to lifting and then i'm just coming in right now with my length free wipes and my young nails protein bond this is the and my young nails dehydrator just to dehydrate the client's nail before i come in with my protein bond so with the protein bond i'm going to give this two coats because that's what the instruction says so that's what i work with so if you're looking for a prep system you can try the young nails dehydrator and protein bond so now I'm going to come in. I did take out some extra colors because this is a freestyle. I didn't know where I was going to go with it. So I have blue, white, pink that I didn't even use. But yeah, I did have my Island Vibes collection out and ready to go based on what my mood says. But I didn't even use that ocean or coconut milk. I did not. But I did use Amy for my... On this set, I did use Amy. So then I saturate my brush. Now I'm coming in. I decided to do like a croc look with blue and white. So I'm going to mix the designs. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my polishes out blue and white and get ready for the design. I was super proud of this freestyle. It was so simple and cute. Yeah, so this that I'm putting on the nail right now is um blooming gel so what i did first i applied that to the nail then i did the cut design in the wet blooming gel then i'm just going to put that under the light let it dry then i'm going to do a marble design on the pointer finger i apply blooming gel one more time and then i'm going to come it come in with blue and white mix it in to make a marble design I can't really tell you how to make a marble design. Marble design varies. It comes out different all the time. So you just have to play with the look, see what you're going for, put more of the color you want to show up more, and that's it. Like, I can't really tell you how to do a marble. It's literally just mixing two colors and however it comes out, that's how it comes out. So now I'm just going to come in with my top coat, and then I'm going to put this under the light to cure one more time.
Now I'm going to be coming in with my first bead and I'm going to place that bead right where the tip and the natural nail meets, making sure my client's finger is facing downward. That way the acrylic is going to naturally flow to the tip of the nail. I'm giving this acrylic very gentle pads. I'm not trying to overwork my acrylic because the acrylic is already doing its job. All you need to do is guide it to the tip of the nail, remove any excess acrylic and please remember to keep wiping your brush in your paper towel and cleaning up your side walls. You did not do all that shaping in the beginning just to come and mess it up with your acrylic application so at least try to keep your sides nice and tidy. Now I'm going to come in with my cuticle bead. I'm going to be using a medium sized bead. I'm going to be placing that just above the cuticle. Never place the bead exactly in the cuticle. When you place it just above the cuticle, you leave all that room to tuck the acrylic back and you're going to have more control because if you place the bead exactly in the cuticle area, as the acrylic starts to form out, it can overflow in the cuticles or on the side walls. So when you place it just above the cuticle, you're leaving all that room for the acrylic to set in and form out and take its place. So now I'm going to apply one more bead right there. That way my apex is nice and strong, especially on longer nails. You never want to have your nails too flat because then your client's nail is going to break very easy. And that's one thing I hate when I just get done with my client and two days later they're texting me that one nail broke or something i really don't like it so i try to make sure even if my nails are not thick but my apex nice and strong and if they hit their nails it's not going to break easily so on the thumb i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to come in place that bead right where the tip and the natural nail meets holding my finger client's finger downward and giving this bead gently taps if you place a bead on your client's nail and you notice that the bead is dry and it's not moving, all you need to do is go in your acrylic, get some more monomer and tap the bead and it's going to start moving. If you pick up a bead and the bead is too wet, all you need to do is, is hold your bead in place for like 5 seconds give it some time to set up before you release it so there are things you can do like not all the time we pick up perfect beads is whenever it's not a good bead is what you do after that this brush that i'm using is a number 12 kalinsky brush this brush is also available on my website every product i use in this video is available on my website for purchase so whenever you're finished with the video don't forget to head over to the website and use code chelsea to save you some money so now i'm going to come in one more time i'm going to be picking up a medium sized bead for my cuticle area just above the cuticle look how my bead was not all up on that cuticle i set it just above the cuticle and then i just tuck it back in the cuticle area just giving it like light tapping motion and guiding my acrylic tapping it in place and then just feathering everything out making sure everything is nice and blended and smooth We're going to be doing a ombre look on this crop nail. So what I'm going to do one more time, place that cuticle bead. And what I'm focusing on on this nail, I do not want my acrylic to flow too much in my crop design because that's one thing I hate when I do a design and I end up covering all the design with the cover powder. So make sure I'm making sure that I'm controlling my acrylic in that cuticle area and that it's not going up too far. So don't pick if you're trying to do a design like this, try not to pick up too much acrylic if you cannot control the bead exactly where you want it to stay. So I'm going to do the same thing for the pointer finger it's an ombre design so i'm gonna try to keep all that design in the cuticle area all that bead in the cuticle area that way my marble design will still show when i'm done working on this nail i did come back and i i applied a extra bead of acrylic because i was thinking i could have 
like it was showing where I started the marble and you know whenever you do a design especially ombre you're always trying to hide where you actually started where the design started I hate to see that so I did come back and I um touched that up with an extra layer of Ami that pink so now I'm gonna come in with my clear acrylic and I'm going to apply this bead making sure I'm encapsulating my nails you always want to encapsulate any type of design that you're doing because when you come in to file the nail then you don't want to file directly on your design and especially with designs like this I would definitely need a clear because the pink wasn't going to go to the free edge and of course I can't leave the tips like that you got to be covered with something so gotta be clear because the design has to show as well so yes I'm just going to encapsulate the nail while I'm building the nail and also making sure the free edge is not too thin everything is looking nice and good my client will not chip her nail easily
so now, now that i'm done with my acrylic application i'm going to come in one more time with my hand file and i'm going to shape my nails making sure i'm holding my hand file completely straight you don't want to tilt your hand file because you don't want to take the tip of your shape in the tip of the nail in so you want to always make sure that you're holding your hand file completely straight especially whenever you're doing a square set so whenever you put your file up against the nail you should already see what you're shaping you should already see what direction the hand file is going don't just like blind file you have to make sure that you're seeing what you're filing whenever you hold that file up against the nail you should already see your shape starting to form out all you need to do is proceed and get the shape in place but always make sure you're not tilting your hand file too much especially for some square nails hold that hand file completely straight especially paying attention to the tip of the nail because that's where sometimes we mess up and we tilt the hand file too much so now we have like the nail being way like narrow and we didn't really intend for it to look like that but because we had tilt the hand file that's why our shape is looking like that so make sure you're paying attention to that as well also make sure that the hand file you're using is not dull because if it's dull you're going to take way longer for your shape going to take way longer for your shape to look nice and crispy. Whenever I'm done shaping, I always make sure I turn my client's hand from the client's view. That way I could see what they're seeing. And then, you know, if I have any arrows, anything I need to go over, I do it in that time. So now I'm coming in with my medium drill bit and my drill is usually at around 20, 21,000 RPMs. You do not have to work at this speed. You can start at 14,000 and work your way up. But for me, currently I'm at 21,000. Whenever I'm drilling, I make sure that I seal my cuticles because if you do not seal your cuticles, water can get under the nail easily and you're going to have lifting. Also, whenever I'm drilling, I drill from the right to the left and my pinky finger is always following me. You're going to need your pinky finger whenever you're drilling because this is going to help you to keep the drill stable. Without your pinky finger, your drill is going to be rolling all over the place. So make sure your pinky finger is a guide and it's going to help you to keep your drill nice and stable. Coming in one more time, I'm going around my cuticle, pulling the skin back. Sometimes you have to pull the client's skin back a little bit. That way you have space to tuck the drill and making sure you're sealing the nail. So sometimes you do have to kind of pull your client's skin back a little bit. Now I'm just going to come in holding my drill bit completely flat to the nail that way it's snug and i'm getting all the bumps and lumps out the nail i hold my drill like i am writing so if you're not sure how to hold your drill try to hold it like you're holding your pen or your pencil that's how i hold my drill and it's been working for me one thing i must say guys i cannot get my hand on a good drill i go through drills like crazy this is my melody susi drill and it's giving me problems already like in four months my drills be lasting four months and that's not that it's not supposed to be like that i shouldn't be buying a drill every four months because a drill is definitely not cheap so if you guys have a drill that you've been using for quite a while it's not noisy it's very good strong nice leave me the comment in the comment section i want the link because i need to buy a drill and i'm not trying to buy the same melody susie drill i'm tired of going through these drills so leave a link in the description in the comment section guys i'm i'm desperately in need of a good drill i do not like a drill that vibrates too much and i do not like a loud drill
I'm done drilling and everything is looking nice and smooth just how I love it I'm just gonna come in one more time with my hand file and I'm gonna go over my shape because sometimes after you're done with your drilling the shape can shift a little bit so always make sure you go over your shape keep going over your shape all the time so the final result is going to be nice and crisp so that's what I'm doing now just going over the shape one more time before I come in with any design On the pinky finger, I decided to do a one-sided like a V fringe, but just one side. So I'm just going to come in with my nail art brush and the same blue polish that I use on the crock and then the marble. That's the same polish that I'm using for this design. So whenever I am doing any type of nail art, my pinky finger is always resting in something because that's going to help to keep me stable. I'm going to be leaving the link in the description box for this nail art brush if you're looking for one you can try this out it's pretty decent so now I'm gonna come in one more time with some white polish I'm going to make I don't know what the name of this is but it's cute I've been seeing it so I decided to go ahead and put it on the sides of of this design right here So on the thumb, I decided to do a French on the thumb. Then I'm going to do a crop design also on the thumb. But I think the, the French on the thumb was super cute. As you guys can see, my pinky finger is helping to keep me stable. And whenever I'm doing a French, I don't do a V, U, all that extra stuff. I just practice to do one thing looking like a comma one big swoop from one side and then the other side then i meet in the middle and then i shade the french in so i think if you practice doing your french just trying to shoot your shot at one side then the other meet in the middle just keep practicing like that i think you're gonna start having like an eye for it and then it's going to become easy and easier because you really have the visuals in your head of what the french should look like so all you need to do now is keep practicing and practicing and practicing and just shoot for the French all the time. And you're going to see how fast your French starts to look super cute. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put some of the blue gel on the thumb and then I'm going to apply the crop design to it. On this pinky finger I'm going to be applying some stones to the sides only like one side like how you see I'm placing it I did use the Macart um, stone glue I'm going to leave the link in the description for this Macart stone glue it does very work very very well my clients always comes back with their stones on so definitely shoot your shot on this one so on the pointer finger I'm going to be applying some cuticle stones to this some rice stones to the cuticles as well and uh, i was literally just making up stuff as i go along guys i didn't know where i was going with this set for real i was like 
oh my gosh i don't know what to do so i was just making stuff up as i go along like literally making stuff up on the spot and it came out super cute i left the middle finger for last because i did not know what to put on it but yes came out cute so on the thumb i'm going to come again and i'm going to just outline the french with some stones and super cute as well that was also on the spot your girl was doing her thing this i was so in love with it it was simple but it was like you know it looked like something like thought out you know sometimes freestyle can look so like disorganized like girl what were you even trying to do i go through that a lot that's why sometimes i don't like to freestyle but i love freestyling at the same time because i want to do stuff that i see online whatever i want to do whatever i want to try but sometimes if i'm just doing stuff on the spot it don't always come out not all my freestyles come out right but yeah this one i really love it and this was her birthday nails too she loved it love because she loves blue so now i'm going to come in and i'm going to top coat the nails top coat all the nails including the middle finger because on the middle finger i decided to do a um glitter throw design and with most of my glitter throw designs i do apply a top coat and then i draw on top and then i do the glitter y'all are gonna see that but don't forget to subscribe to the channel guys don't forget to like this video please hit that like button right now and make sure you guys check out my shop in this video i use the bubble pink i use my square tips i use my monomer i use my hand file so go ahead and check the link in the description box all the links all the for everything i use the links are going to be in the description and get this pink it's called amy you're gonna love it your clients are going to love it and also i'm coming out with some brand new colors y'all are gonna love this one because why did i find a better for like the formula i have now is amazing it's an a plus but the new formula is a plus 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 okay so stay tuned for that so this is what I was telling you guys on the middle finger what I did I draw on top of the top coat because when I'm done drawing all I'm going to do is throw the glitter in the wet polish cure it and then dust it off and then that's going to be the end of the video so thank you guys so much for watching thank you so much and I'm all I'm I'm over a thousand subscribers right now. I'm not sure what exactly my numbers are, but your girl also made it to 1,000 subscribers. So I'm just, you know, gonna keep dropping content. I'm gonna be here like I ain't gonna, I ain't going nowhere. So prepare to get sick of me, okay? Anyway, so thank you guys so much for watching. One big